welcome to this week's edition of the Collection Comic of the Week. The book I have chosen for this week is Batman Plus Arsenal, number one. And this book is significant for me, and this is the very first, first issue that I've ever had as part of my comic book collection. I remember... Um, having allowance money, and I had to go to Walmart with my mother, getting groceries, or I need new clothes for, for, for church, or I think it was church, yeah, I uh, need new church clothes, and I had a little, uh, a few dollars allowance money, and I wanted to ask my mom if we could go look for comic books, and see if I could get one comic book with my, with the money I had, and I'm looking at all the books, and I see this glorious, glorious, glorious number right there. And I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it's an issue number one. It's an issue number one. I gotta get that. I gotta get that. It's gonna be worth millions of dollars one day. And, I'm like, oh. and then I look at the, my mom looks at the price and she says, you're a dollar short. You have two dollars. Two whatever, you know. You have two dollars to buy a comic book. This is a three dollar comic book. That's too much money to pay for a comic book. I'd kill for a $3 comic book right now. <laughs> but I begged my mom, no, no, it's going to be worth a lot of money one day. It's an issue number one. Can you please have me have an extra dollar? Please, please, please. My mother, being a good mother, gave in. And this was the first, first issue I ever had. And, you know, it was a book that I didn't really, maybe didn't understand much whenever I had it other than, you know, here's Batman and here's this new character I learned of, Arsenal, you know, which I'd go on, that's Roy Harper and know of him through as Speedy and then later on, you know, Arsenal and reading about him and, you know, in books and it's on the Arrow show and all these different things. So it was my first exposure to Roy Harper without me really understanding who Roy Harper was, but that wasn't why I got the book. Uh, it was this Batman in the number one, and I was on cloud nine. I finally had an issue number one in my collection. Was it worth it? Was it worth the three dollars? Well, let's take a look and see. Pretty interesting cover here. Just you know, and there was <laughs> there was what sold me, baby. There's what made me pay a, a dollar more than what I would uh, or had my excuse me, had my mother pay a dollar more than what I'd normally have to pay for a comic book to get. But yeah, that, 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 that shiny red one. And, uh, boy, I used to eat a lot of these. These were so good. Yeah. Starts out in Bloodhaven, Nightwing there. Which... This got me excited because I was a Nightwing fan. I like how they're just, uh, they start out by just like kind of, they're funny, but like shooting the shit, which is kind of funny. And then this, this, this will probably think I like, uh, lovely, isn't it? I need to talk to you, buddy. It's kind of important. You know, he's saying that to Nightwing. Shoot. And then he shoots. <laughs> Shoots the guy right through the hand. It's like, Roy, I need to tell you what's going on. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Deadshot there. Or KG Beast. Uh, looks a lot like Deadshot, though. This. Mm, I'm not really an NBA fan anymore, but I thought this was cool. It had, like, the... Uh, the vertical leaps, or the, you know, or the inches, rather, the, uh, everybody. You know, I just thought that was kind of cool. Kind of a cool, uh, cool way of, uh, you know, advertising the game. Yeah, I thought this was... The art isn't bad. Like, it's not bad art. A little, you know, some of the details aren't really aren't really there but it, it's not bad art in this book and you see Roy 
finally meeting Batman to, to help him with this case. Another, uh, another uh, <laughs> video game advertisement here. Hmm. Wonder if that phone number is still active. <laughs> she thinks D pad. <laughs> yeah. Too violent of a game that I would have played uh, back in, when I had this comic book, but. Talks to Batman. Batman in his Batman way agrees to help him. Shot of the Batmobile there. And here is the thing that shot me the most about this book. This panel right here is what shot me the most about this book as a kid. This book, need I remind you, was picked up in the toy section of Walmart. And I'm reading the book and I read, I want him in cuffs. Damn it. And I could just sound out that word, know that there was a cuss word in this. So, I mean, I'm not reading this in front of my mom. I'm reading this in my bedroom. And I'm like, uh-oh, there's, there's a cuss word. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Um, it, it, It's my issue number one. I don't want that to be taken away from me. But that's a cuss word. I can't have that. And eventually I just kind of stashed it away and... Pretended like it wasn't in there, and my mom never knew. So, if, mom, if you see this, uh, sorry. And here we go in. Meet your new comic source. Miss those ads, man. Miss those ads. More action. A cool I, I do like this batmobile design like it's simple it, it, it's kind of like a a nice mix between like the michael keaton batman batmobile but kind of a little bit of the uh the batman forever batmobile as well so uh real real cool design the new adventures of johnny quest computer game i remember this cartoon not the Johnny Quest that a lot of people know, but this was this was my Johnny Quest. But I, I will concede the uh, the original was better. Nice shot there. This is the part that I thought was cool because there's just a lot of just a lot more action. And as a kid, you know, while I didn't mind dialogue, I I you know, I was seven eight years old. I was I was doing a lot more looking at pictures than. Uh, reading dialogue at this time but you know uh, learning swear words apparently <laughs> through reading the dialogue so see what I mean I kind of got like the you know, the front end of it never really light up but like didn't really light up like the Batman Forever Batmobile but like the front end of it gives me gave me vibes of the Batman Forever Batmobile all the Sega Genesis games that you can buy. More stuff, more action. It was a lot longer of a book than I remember as a kid. So I guess that does justify the extra dollar, huh? <laughs> Can they get the uh, subscription you know this was the only for me this was the only way i could have gotten subscriptions back in the day but now it's you know pull list got more more action you know, they start talking about Oliver here, as you can see. Can I get more on that? Mm. 
I miss, you know, that's a big moment. And I, I wasn't really following Green Arrow at this time, so I kind of didn't realize the significance of of Batman saying that. But, you know, going back and rereading this, now I know. Now, obviously, they brought Oliver back from the dead, uh, as they do almost everybody. Uh, but hearing Batman say that would be a big deal if you were a, if you were an Oliver Queen fan reading comics at this time. Fight scene. Watch this space. I miss the hell out of this. Where it just kind of tells you about everything that might be going on. And little, uh, you know, here's everything that kind of went on. Little synopsis of everything. You know, I guess now with the internet, you don't need as much. But this, th this is what made me want to be on the lookout for other books that could be coming to Walmart or anywhere for that matter. Walmart was my source at the time. More stuff, more fighting. Just a lot of good fight scenes, so maybe that's why I really liked it as a kid. Art holds up today. You know, maybe not the deep story that everybody was wanting. Everybody's been saved. And Uncle Batman. And there, and then Hitman by Garth Ennis. Not a big uh, Garth Ennis fan, but I know this, uh, this book is very revered. And... An Elseworld story about Batman and Captain America. If I can ever find this book, I... We'll definitely pick it up, and no price is too high. And uh, got a more video games and an advertisement for the Gap, and that was Batman Plus Arsenal number one. My very first issue number one, my first exposure new characters, my first time of seeing adult themes and adult language in a comic book. It was all right here, and. You know, I kind of put it in my collection, and I never saw any more going to Walmart or, or Kroger or, you know, the drugstore, any, any place that I knew sold comic books. I never saw any more Batman plus Arsenal books on the shelf. You know, never saw an issue two or a three or a five or whatever. So when I kind of got back into reading comic books in 2000, 2001 the hobby back up I had the internet so I found this book and I'm like okay I wonder if this book is still going on I wonder what issue there too now what have you and I look it up and this was it this was the only issue of Batman plus Arsenal so maybe the number one was for one shot maybe it didn't sell I don't know I don't know so what I thought was going to be worth a lot of money and what I had to beg my mom to give me an extra dollar to purchase at Walmart is probably maybe still worth the $2.95 plus tax that we paid for it. But it made me happy as a kid and made me feel like I had somewhat of a complete collection of comics back in the day. And eh, looking back, it wasn't a terrible book. I'm definitely glad that I picked it up, even if it wasn't the uh, life-changing book in my collection that I thought it would be. Do you also own that book? Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share, subscribe for more content, not just from the world of comic books, but from the world of pro wrestling, gaming, anime, and all things geek culture. Follow me on my social media pages, facebook.com slash athleticgeek89, twitter athletic underscore geek89, instagram athleticgeek89, and if you'd like to help improve this channel financially, I am on Patreon, patreon.com slash athleticgeek89. Other than that, I'm out. Yobaku, later. Mm -hmm.